So if you want to learn new advanced TypeScript techniques and write cleaner and better code as a TypeScript developer to eventually move from a junior position into a senior position and take your skills to the next level, well, in this video, we're going to cover advanced TypeScript features and techniques that you don't know about and you should start using right away. So whether you're just starting out or as a beginner or basically intermediate, this video is for you to actually learn how you can use advanced techniques in TypeScript. And this will actually allow you to write cleaner and easier and maintainable code and actually level up your skill set in writing TypeScript code with different frameworks. And in this particular example, we're going to use React. So you can basically apply those techniques anywhere other than React from just like Angular, Vue.js or anywhere where TypeScript could run. But in this particular video, just simply in this video, we're going to use React to demonstrate how to use those advanced techniques. So the first most important technique in here are advanced types. So let's imagine you have this very basic component in here that renders just a title and a content. So let's imagine this is just like a blog post or something that has a title and a content. And this is simply what's going to render It's going to accept those through props and it can just work fine. Now, how can you actually level up this component or if you want to just do something a little bit more advanced? So let's imagine here we have props. So we have two props in here. We have a title and a content. Both of them are strings. And that means since, since both of them are strings in here, like we can easily just go and do like props.title and we can just change that, right? Exactly. So let's say we want to make like this title in here and this content read only. And that means we don't want to actually change that interface. So we want to create another type that we can just give it this interface as an argument. And it can just convert me this props interface in here, like whatever properties are inside of the interface itself are going to be converted into a read only. So it's going to be the same way we do like read only this and read only title, but we're just going to do an advanced type. And this is actually the advanced type we created. So it's called type, we named it read only props. And in TypeScript for types, you can basically give it a type in here between the two brackets. So here you just give it a variable, which is a T, which stands for like a template. So you give it in here, this is basically the variable is going to take later on, which is in our case going to be a props interface. And here we give it, oh, just convert me this into like a read only. We do a P in key off. That means P in here is going to represent, you know, the, the name or the key of this. And the key in here is actually a title and contents and TP in here, which means we're accessing the actual type in here. So that means it's going to do the same thing. It's going to be like title. So this one in here is going to be replaced by title. And this one or over here is going to be replaced by the type of that key. And simply just going to append read only. That means this interface, every single property that is inside of that interface is going to become a read only property. So you simply here we just do oh read only props. We pass in the props in here, which is take this variable is going to replace this t variable, and you have read only components. Now the component is read only. So for example, in here, if we try to go in and do like props.title, as Christine says, oh, cannot assign to title because it is a read only property, and this error in here propagates from TypeScript. So this way it gives you like a really good experience if you're like working with your team or with another member. So you're just making it read only that tells them, oh, you don't you should never actually change that. Or if you have a bug inside of your code, TypeScript is going to immediately tell you, oh, you cannot change this property. This property is read only and should never be changed. And using advanced types, it makes the code a lot cleaner by just creating a custom type in here. You can reuse this type. In fact, you can just go in and do like export type and you can use this type inside of any other module or any other component very easily. The second one are discriminated unions. So for example, we've got this simple demo in here that shows you how discriminated unions are and how they work. So we have like a good approach and a bad approach. And if you look at this, if we just try, for example, what all of this actually does actually allows you to calculate an area of a different shapes. So going from a circle, rectangle and a square. So for example, here for a circle, just by providing a radius in here, which is like the radius, you can calculate this crease in here. It basically works the same way and it happens to work basically the same way. If we go to something a little bit more advanced, like we can just use five, five, five in here and go to like rectangle, rectangle, try to calculate that accuracy. The calculations and the values or the outputs is basically the same way, which means the code is working the same way. But the difference in here, one, the good approach is using discriminated unions and the other one, the bad approach is using the old way. And that actually differentiates between a good clean code and a bad code. So for example, here I have two sections that separates between the bad code and the 
good code. So for the bad one here, for example, usually as developers, as TypeScript developers, when we want to define something, we use just a type or an interface and we just do, oh, for example, this is my shape kind of, you know, this is what the shape looks like. It has a kind, it has a radius, width, height, size. Why? Because a shape could potentially be a rectangular, a square or a circle. So for a circle, we need only the radius for a rectangular, we need like, you know, width and height and size. And for a square, we just need width and height. So here we can just define like a bad get area function. This one actually allows us to calculate the area depending on the type. The kind in here is going to be either like circle, rectangle or square. So it's going to tell us what is the kind of the shape we're dealing with. And like if we do switch in here, you can do like circle and so on and so forth. But the thing in here, what you have to do, you have to make all these properties actually like optional, which means they can be null in here. So it's either a number or an undefined. And you have to do like, you know, case circle. And if you look at the shape in this case, in here, you know, like, oh, this is just a bad shape. It, it just like has, you know, this whole shape in here, it doesn't actually tell us, oh, this is actually a circle, you only need the size and so on and so forth. So this is actually gonna like degrade a little bit of the code, and it makes it a little bit harder. And if you want to add more into it, or sometimes you just do a mistake, which is a very hard to recover from is gonna like do, um, you know, bad calculations, stuff like that. But if we jump to the good approach in here, while you want to use it, instead of defining a type, you want to define or use discriminated unions. And that means you actually define different objects and you actually just do discriminated unions between them. So as Christian here, the shape for us could be either like a, a kind circle and only has a radius, it doesn't need all the properties because if it's circle it only needs the radius or a rectangle width and height and for a square it just needs the size. So we can define each object dependent on the shape we have. And of course, we can use discriminated unions or the union kind of operator in here to separate between them. Now on the switch in here, when we try to do switch kind, it tells us, oh, the kind could be circle, rectangle, square. And when we do case circle in here, the actually TypeScript immediately knows that you're dealing with a circle and it's going to use this object, it's going to completely disregard the other objects. And if I look into the shape right over here, as see has a kind circle it has a radius. It doesn't have a width, it doesn't have a height, it doesn't care about that because in this case only, it's gonna be a circle and a circle only. And that's actually prevents a lot of issues because for example, if you try to do like do, oh, shape dot width, you can't do that because the width doesn't exist. But on the other hand, in the bad one, if you do shape dot width, you can easily access that because the width actually exists and it's actually basically as part of the same object. So that's basically the main difference between discriminated unions and using it the old way. And here just we have just a simple component that does the calculation depending on circle rectangle, and it just renders the inputs in there to make it work. For the third technique is time guards. So let's say, for example, we want to just render something as simple as that, where you just like have an interface and you just render, oh, the name of the employee and where he works, like the company name in here, and the number of employees. So that's basically what it is. But here we have a bad approach versus a good approach. And everything as always in TypeScript difference in the code because that's where like TypeScript tells you, oh, you can't use that. Or if you use that, maybe you have some errors or that's potentially a really wrong path that you should not follow and so on and so forth. For example, in here, we have two interfaces. We have the person interface and we have the company interface. And each interface in here has a person, has like a type in here that tells you what the type of the current interface is. And we have on top, we have a type that is entity that could either be a person or a company. So for the bad approach in here, what we're doing, we're creating a function as we usually do, as we all did as developers or TypeScript developers, we create a function, we return Boolean and we say, oh, if entity type equals a person, each person is going to equal true. As simple as that. And here inside of like bad, you know, component here, we do, oh, if it is person entity, it will work. You actually, this will work. We'll execute fine. We'll allow you to return this if it's like a person. Otherwise, if it's a company, it just allows you to return the view for the company and it just works fine. But there is actually one very important thing that you should notice in TypeScript is actually type narrowing. And what I mean by type narrowing? So if you do here is person entity inside of this block in here, inside of this if statement block, all of this should be now like the entity in here should be a type of a person, right? Yeah, it should. But the way we're doing it in here, it doesn't narrow anything. TypeScript doesn't know that. And TypeScript doesn't narrow down the type right over here into a person or a company. So what we have to do, we have to do as keywords. So if we're going to use entity, you have to do as person to access the different properties of that person. If I remove this as in here, TypeScript is going to like say complaining in here, oh, age doesn't exist on type entity, because it doesn't exist on type company, because that's a shared kind of type, right? And that same thing happens for the company as well. 
where it doesn't basically know if this is a company or not. So you can't actually access a company only property. Now, on the other hand, in the good approach in here, we have type narrowing or type guards and type script. And this one can allow you to do really nice things. So for here, for example, oh, is person has an entity, the same thing. The only difference here, instead of returning a Boolean, we're returning entity and we're using the new keyword is keyword and you do, oh, entity is person. So this is only going to return true if entity is equal to a person entity or person interface. And simply you can just do the same checking because that's all it is. But that's basically the only important part instead of using a Boolean. So now we do this, the same thing, pass an entity. But here, TypeScript is going to actually know everything. If you just go ahead over the entity, you know, oh, the entity is a type of a person. And if you compare it to the previous one, entity is just a type of an entity. And without using as or anything, you can just basically access whatever different stuff in here, depending on like the type of entity, whether a company or a person. And yeah, so like when you try to render, you have just simple data in here, you can just use it and everything should work fine. And this will make your code a lot more cleaner and it would just like narrow down the potential of having bad code or having weird errors. And for the last one are utility types. So what do you mean by utility types? So let's take for example, we have this simple example in here, we have like an interface person, and this person has a name, age and a job. So let's say there's actually an interface being used in a different module or a different component. And you would just want to use the same interface and you want to import it because you don't want to like retype the code or something. In this case, and you want to just do some modifications, for example, you want to use this person inside of the state, but you don't want to use the job person because that's going to be an employed person in that particular component. So you want to only handle name and age. So how can you actually do that? How you can instruct TypeScript that, oh, please disregard this and just, you know, take person, remove the job property from it and only leave name and age. And that's it. Well, likely for us, TypeScript actually provides us with a really nice, awesome utility types that are pre built into the new TypeScript and they are like being added on the new versions. There's like this cool one, which is called emit, which basically you give it like the interface you want to emit, and you give it the property name. So this will actually remove the job property from the person and will actually return it. And here, as we said here, we only want to just use name and age. And there's actually a bunch of different properties in here. For example, there is like the partial person in here, you can just use partial, you can give it interface, read only, as well as actually a pre built one, there is the pick where you can just pick something in here on an interface and miss and many, many more. Or if you want to go a little bit more advanced as we did before, you can just go and create a custom interface like normal, and you give it a type, you'd say, Oh, key in here, everything could be, you know, the actual type of itself, whether it's like string number or string, or null. And you can nest multiple type annotations on it themselves. For example, you can use knowable, then you can give it the emit, you can give it the interface thing, and you can give it the parameters in here. And all of those are going to be working fine, because this unemployed person is going to be knowable, and it can be like can be null. everything in here, excuse me, name and age could potentially be null because here, they're not null. And in our example, we just have like a simple form in here, you can just like, you know, name your age in here, and it can just work absolutely fine. And you can just have so much flexibility with those rebuild TypeScript utility types. And if you simply just go ahead and do like utility types inside of the handbook or the TypeScript documentation, you can see there's plethora of them in here from the side, like from awaited, partial, required, so many of them. And all of them are actually explained in details in here. So if you go to documentation, you will be able to learn everything in details about every single utility type. Well, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this really awesome TypeScript video. And if you're looking for more videos like this, advanced stuff, React, TypeScript, let me know. I'll catch you hopefully in the next ones.